Now we heard that there were some rumblings about needing some more stage one playoffs and so we decided to bring more CGL stage one playoffs. This time around it's going to be the NA console GM tier. We, Ray, I mean this is going to be a good one. We're going to have Chicago versus the world versus we love Jewel. My name is Sam Talks. Joining me to try hard Ray. Ray, what a matchup. Yeah, I'm very excited. This is console. This is the GM tier. This is the best of the best from the console scene. Going at it with the championship, a stage one crown on the line. And we all know with the stage playoffs, you get first place, you get that extra point toward your map, uh, toward your match victories. And second place, you still get three points toward your map score. So that's nothing to sneeze at, but you want that crown. You want that extra point for future seeding going into the playoffs. Now, if you take a look over here, Ray, we have the beautiful bracket so you can see what exactly our team's journey has been through so far. We love Jewel eking out a win just barely against Nimi and Lions, and that is not an easy feat, by the way. No wonder it went to that 3-2 score line. And we had Chicago versus the World going up against Twilight's Zibbing Cat. You can see that fared a little bit better for them with a 3-1. And now we have these two teams, these two hardcore players going at each other in this matchup here and we had a little bit of interesting facts about we love jewel apparently if they they're filled with players from undefeated teams all across cgl so looking to add another tick on that box for them yeah they had three players from wasted potential so we'll go ahead and start bringing you some of those rosters First, we have We Love Jewel, and those players I was talking about were Tracemaker, Renzer, and Kopi. They all come from Wasted Potential. Big name in the console scene, so these players are ramped up, talented, and ready to go. Indeed so, and rounding it all out, Parzival, Mental, it's a, it's, it's a fantastic lineup here. And let's go ahead and take a look at Chicago versus the world. Is an interesting player logo or team logo rather jt cool 555 witty weeb thanatos kermy and cry melt so these are your players these are what they're going to have to be going through but we also want to know what maps they're going to be playing on i mean listen we got we got maps that already we there. have an idea of where we're going to go <laughs> it's already right in front of us we're going to oasis ray yeah, I'm I'm a big fan of Oasis, especially with this new meta that we're in where it feels like the first time in the history of Overwatch, it's very open. It's very like, what are you good at playing? You're good at playing that? Okay, you can make that work. Just play it well and you can pretty much do it. it it's crazy, but look you know, focusing on Oasis specifically from these games I've been casting recently, it lends itself very well to this Wrecking Ball style composition, but I've seen so many adaptations within the Wrecking Ball composition itself. Do you play a Sombra to go against the other ball? Do you play a Casty for more burst damage? It, 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 it's also like really map specific as well obviously with what happens with these control maps but ball so far has just kind of been that standard play i think we might see I, i'm hoping at the very least that we see reinhardt on academy it's that claustrophobic nature that i think really lends itself well to reinhardt play but uh, city center and obviously gardens i think that's gonna be a, a ball topia but already right off the bat instead of reinhardt though Ramatra. That's okay. I'm, I'm, I'm not crying. <laughs> I, I, <laughs> no tears. I, I was going to say, it was probably either going to be Reinhardt, Arissa, or Ramatra. Those are the three you're probably going to be looking at. And we do get the Ramatra. And it, as it sits, we are in full mirror mode at the moment. I'm assuming Tracemaker on this uh, Symmetra is just the TP, the team out, so then they can go back to Reaper and they can use their teleporter. Uh, they can teleport back to the team. Um, but yeah, that's exactly yep, what's going to happen. So a full on mirror, it's going to come down to moving as a unit. And these soldiers, Parsifal and Witty Weep, have to be oh, ready gosh. to set them up with the railgun shots. And it's already We Love Jewel who's going to take so much damage. Look at that force away. That's going to give Chicago versus the world access to the point and control of almost the entirety inside of this room. While we have Romatro moving forward inside of Nemesis mode, Witty Weave is going to take out your Reaper. So on the other side, Thanatos gets to breathe a little bit easier while putting, continuing to put the pressure back over there. Chicago versus the world manages to pick up this point and start the percentage gains. 
Yeah, and that kind of shows you, I was curious how the fight was going to go, as we're going to see the Ravenous Vortex coming out, forcing JT Cool back and had to use the Wraith form, but I was curious how it was going to be, because it was a trade for a Lucio and a Reaper. It seemed like the the Reaper was the more important piece, because you lost all that burst damage. Ooh. Here it is, though. Rizzer already has the Kitsune Rush, and Mental also has the Annihilation. So many different choices here for We Love Jewel, and they're gonna go ahead, start annihilating one after another, and Kofi is gonna blast things wide open, taking out JT Cool. Still, though, for Chicago versus the world, it's all about hanging back, waiting for that Reaper to regroup with the team. 100% as they're doing the right thing, not allowing any more staggers to come in, just <clears throat> completely regrouping and resetting. And they're going to be able to come into this fight and possibly re-engage, but they have to be careful. Yes. Kofi has the sound barrier. They're, they're possibly going to do the same exact thing. This time around, though, Thanatos is going to pop the Annihilation. It's actually going to get Mental out of the picture, out of the whole equation. Kofi also uses the beat the sound barrier but by that point the damage had already been done everyone is dead you're already gonna try and survive crime out using the kitsune rush and wait we three on the board and the icing on the cake you were able to flip that point with very limited ult use it just took your annihilation and your kitsune rush and you forced out the sound barrier so you're gonna be able to have this death blossom from jt cool 100 percent Free. You just got to make sure you position yourself perfectly and you're going to do the utmost damage to the back line. It's going to be another engagement here. Kirby not taking any chances. It's going to let the power of music keep Chicago alive and well. You're going to see We Love Jewel. Just take that disengage. Why do that if we don't need to? JT Cool looking for an opportunity to go in with his death blossom and it is bloomed. It's blooming big, Ray. And that is why that sound barrier force in the previous fight was so important for Chicago v. The World. JT Cool able to position himself while Wheel of Jewel is trying to rotate to the point, gets the maximum value Death Blossom and sinks their teeth into more of this beautiful, delicious percentage on the point. As uh, Wheel of Jewel gonna have quite the ult advantage coming back now, so this is their opportunity to get back in this fight and steal away the choice. percentage. There's no other choice. We're at 90%. Parzival has to use it, and now we're going to see Tracemaker trying to get the Death Blossom up there. Oh, but Winnie Weave actually snipes their head. Colleen off trying to do any damage. Tracemaker has been completely denied, and Parzival inside of that overclock is over with. Now we have been brought into overtime. Mental needs to make this annihilation count. Meanwhile, in your back line is Thanatos with an annihilation that is about to be popped of their own. You can see that it is just dismantling. We love Jewel one after another. And Ray, we can go ahead and put this round to bed. Chicago versus the world taking round one, 100 to 40. Yeah, I'm extremely impressed with how Chicago v. The World played that. They, they had the mental just ideas of knowing the situations going on when they lost their Reaper early during that Annihilation for the rest of the team. Back out. I'll get out of the range of the Annihilation. Let it die down. Get your Reaper back. Re-engage and set things off with your own Annihilation. They are positioning themselves so well. And that's the important thing. <laughs> excuse me when you're playing those Ramatra compositions it's moving as a group and positioning yourself in the perfect spots to take full advantage of that nemesis form of your speed boost and then getting your sojourn into the positions as we now move to city center we now see a diva composition coming out of chicago view the world which is interesting because i don't normally see the diva come out unless you're trying to counter a ball when you can't play it better than the other team so we'll see what Deep is going to be able to bring out here and what Thanatos can do on this hero. Exactly. We love Jewel. Electing to not change up too much here. We're we targeting the Lucio. Going to take a lot of damage. Forces to translocate out of there in order to just be able to stay alive. Kobe still stuck inside of that hack. Now we have been brought back up to full. It's going to be... We love Jewel hiding out inside of that room, waiting for Chicago, which is actually a really good idea if you think about it, though, Ray. It forces Thanatos to have to go into that tight, confined corridors where Mental is really just waiting for the opportunity to pop that nemesis form and really go to brawl downtown. Parzival, that is an unbelievable shot to take out Witty Weep. Now it's up to JT Cool to try and be able to find something here, maybe be able to even things back around to give Chicago a fighting chance, but that has been ripped away with the loss of Thanatos. I'm going to be honest, Sam. I am not liking this team of composition against their Amatra. I don't know if they were expecting Lee, We Love Jewel to do something different, but yeah, we now see the swap down 
Santos going over to the Ramatra, trying to match them and beat them at their own game like they did previously. So that had to be my guess. They were expecting a whole different type of composition coming out of them because there, there makes no other sense why you came out on that Diva. Exactly 100%. And the fact that they made that change quick it just goes to show you that Chicago is ready to make those adaptations if need be rather than trying to ego it out to something we want. And look how well this is working out for Chicago now. Look how low Mental is and is being forced to play on this back foot. The point hasn't even been taken yet. Kofi already had the sound barrier up. He's going to use that to make sure that Mental stays alive. And because of that, you're able to eliminate Kermi. Chicago has just lost a lot there. Crime out is actually going to commit the Kitsune Rush, a very bold choice from them. And something that I'm guessing Chicago feels confident that they're going to be able to take. But they're going to have to contend with the counter Kitsune Rush, which Tracemaker is going to take full advantage of. And now they get to go into the next team fight with Annihilation, and they also get to go into it with a Death Blossom. Yeah, I'm not sure about that Kitsune Rush from Chicago via the world. I mean, I guess at the end of the day, it was a trade for Kitsune Rushes, and you and then you sound barrier in that fight. Uh, but when you mentioned them getting that pick on the Kermi uh, during their sound barrier use, that was the, like, the crux of the situation there, because uh, Kermi was so close to sound barrier, he now has it. So they could have had that to be able to sustain during the fight, but in comes the Annihilation. It's all Annihilation, Okok. Thanatos gets one before being traded out by their mirror. But Chase Baker so far just hasn't had the luck inside of these death bosses. They're not able to get the kill. Meanwhile, Mental gets another one, getting rid of the Reapers on the field. Now they have to survive, but it's going to be more than possible with the amount of efforts that they have. Wait a minute. No, they don't. I thought the supports were still there. No, they're not. Yeah, they are. And during that, they flipped it pretty quickly, even when that fight was still being extended and they were trying to fight it out. That that was incredible work by Chicago v. The World. Now that they're matching this Ramacha composition, they seem to have found their footing and they're looking much more impressive. Like, this comes down to a battle of the soldiers. Both of them have these overclocks online. So who I'm is scared. going to come through with the big play for their team? All right, Parzival and Witty Weave have both bought the overclocks. You can see that the railgun shots are just flying all over the place. It's Parzival lopping Thanatos right back into the spawn room. Witty Weave not as successful, and it's going to be that much more difficult through that sound barrier. And it is going to be We Love Jewel getting the point right back, but still, it's being held on to. Chicago is so good at this. The hold, the stall. The stall goes crazy. Kermi on that um, on that Lucio. The, that was the so we saw both those overclocks getting popped. The reason why one was more successful than the other was in the middle of that Kopi built up the sound barrier and used it to give them a sustain. So that that was insane. But what I'm looking forward to from Chicago v the world is we started coining this phrase for the combination of Death Blossom and Kitsune Rush the Shadow Fox. Ooh, it goes right in JT cool. Even through the protection, Susan was able to get one onto Kopi and Witty Weeb was had enough. Damage done to that Disruptor shot. Got the next kill. It's going to be Witty Weep to continue the approach. Look how low Renzer is. This is their target. They want to get rid of them so desperately. But at the very least, we're seeing once again, we love Jewel stalling it out for as long as they possibly can. And it seems to be the efforts of Tracemaker, who's actually doing a really good job at that. Had their Death Blossom built up, but goes down before they can even begin to use it. And now for We Love Jewel Ray, it's all about get as much as we can before we fall or wait for as long as we can to get reinforcements here. But it's going to be that, oh, Thanatos and an Annihilation. That could be good enough here for Chicago to be able to take the point. And indeed it is. It is, but that is a huge investment from Chicago v. The World to commit that annihilation. It is a huge game-winning ultimate, and they're not going to have that for this next fight, but they know We Love Jewel's going to come back into the fight with that in their back pocket. They have to hope, with the power of music and the sound barrier that Kermi has, that they can focus down uh, mental through the annihilation before the sound barrier is done playing its lovely music oh we did weave stalling things out using this overclock a very good move now parsable using the overclock of their own now you're gonna see the kitsune rush and that's the combination that we love jewel was hoping for now they get to use their sound barrier still have their death blossom and the annihilation from mental you've managed to bait it out this is gonna be disastrous for chicago because they also used the kitsune rush but killed nobody inside of it chase maker looking for the right opportunity to pop off here and in it goes but they're still surviving they're still living enough damage was done to jt cool to get rid of them now it's hunting down and getting rid of the nuisance that it has been this sojourn only one left on the side of Chicago, but we love Jewel 
is gonna make it work. Cry melt, you tried. But Ray, we got a rap we got a map one on our hands. This is one to one. Yeah, a banger from the get-go between both of these teams, and I am all here for it. What that really came down to, I mean, both maps, we saw one crucial fight on University that came down to Chicago v. The World, forcing out the sound barrier and, and while they were annihilating, and them keeping their annihilation in their back pocket. What that last map came down to was Ultimate Economy once again. Chicago v. The World used the annihilation, probably didn't need it necessarily, probably could have won the fight without it. And because of that, you go into the next fight without it, and it, it just crumbled from there. But now we see Chicago whipping out the battle cattle, and I love it. Arissa is one of my favorite new tanks to play in this game, and if they can use this Lucia speed boost, get into the face of this Ramatra, and if you can force him to use the Nemesis form early, you're gonna be setting yourself up to be in a very solid spot. Well, let's hope this battle cattle, well, as it was coming out of my mouth, this battle cattle is gonna be served up medium rare. The only way to take here, delicious steaks, by the way. Witty Weeb is going to trade things out, but with the loss of a tank, we love Jewel is in a much better position to be able to take this point. And look at that, they are going to be able to. Couldn't agree more. Get out of here if you cook your steak further than medium rare. It's rare or medium rare or you're not, you're not welcome to the cookout, I'm sorry. <laughs> As uh, Chicago be the world trying to, uh, they, wow, they flipped that point. Wow, very impressive. That was so quick. I don't believe it. They literally walked onto, they really walked onto it and <laughs> killed everyone from We Love Jewel. They're just completely like, forced them away. They're just like, hey, buddy, mind if I crash your party? And just crashed it. That was that was insane. That's the power. Like I mentioned, if you could just speed in, get into the Ramatra's face, force out that nemesis form, and then he has nothing to sustain himself. He has no armor. He has no shield. He is very vulnerable once that cooldown is not available. Ultimates are also looking really good for Chicago right now. Kermi is about to have that sound barrier, which is going to get them that edge up in this fight. Upcoming oh! one, but she might not even need it. Not with Witty Weave landing railgun shots onto Parsable. Ooh, things are going back and forth, but both of the DPS are gone for We Love Jewel. And really, at this point, just get out of there or reset. And that's what they need to do, but they lose mental. Ooh, okay. Oh, what a stagger. I mean, at that point, just die. Like, just don't stagger it any more than that at that point. They, they did a good job of just mentally resetting. But, man, look at the ult discrepancy. Chicago via the world has just an entire treasure chest of tools and treasures to use in this fight. As long as they don't go overboard and get greedy, they are in a prime position to win. Oh my goodness, JT Cool goes right in. It's all happening. It's all blowing up like crazy. Mental just taking the L, having to jump off, having to reset. Chicago only needed to use two ray count them two ultimates and they forced out two count them two ultimates out of wheel of jewel both of their support ultimate so what are they going to do to counteract this incoming overclock this incoming terror surge they have literally nothing they have to hope this annihilation goes hard Mental needs to give the Annihilation a chance. Oh my gosh, Parzival, you're playing with fire, my friend. They can't even go through the Disruptor shot because they know they're gonna fall, but at the very least, they're gonna build themselves up to a Railgun, but this is not what you wanna happen. This is not how you want the fight to open up. You do not want to lose Kofi so soon. Now Kermi's gonna pop the Sound Barrier because they know Annihilation is on the field. That's it, that's it, Wait a we? What are you doing to this team? We love Jewel, sit right back in the spawn room where they are gonna be taking the L here. Chicago versus the world. Map one here on Oasis goes to them. What a response from Chicago v. The World. After dropping that sub map, it, it felt like that was the kick in the butt they needed. They're like, okay, enough is enough. Let's pull out the Arissa. Let me get into your backlights and let me annihilate them. Sheesh. As JT Cool on this Reaper gets the play of the game, but probably the player of the map, in my opinion. His death blossoms came through in big ways and it felt like he always knew the situations at hand okay they don't have sound barrier they don't have suzu anymore let me go in and death blossom and i'm going to kill three exactly it was just as simple as that let me go in let me 
ult, let me kill everybody, let me save the day, and let me have the cool play of the game clip that comes along with it. Still though, we also gotta give it to JT Cool as well, and the rest of Chicago, because especially in that really initial team fight, or that very initial moments of the final submap of Oasis on Gardens there, they won that fight. They completely pushed away We Love Jewel, who had taken the point, who had won the initial round, who had won the initial team fight, and then completely stole it away from them. And once they got the hold of it, they never let go. And it was just good ultimate economy. They 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 were able to hold on to the ultimates for so long and cycled them so well that We Love Jewel had no answer. They really didn't because they kept losing someone even before the fight had really begun. As a color caster and someone who's always thinking about team planning and just the skill of the team and what they're thinking, for them to just have a firm grasp on that alt economy and to play it so picture perfect to where it never mattered what the other team had because they always had enough to counter them, it's just perfection. It really is. Absolute, utter perfection. And what a way to start off map one, though. It was neck and neck up until that final sub map but now we have our map two ray i mean were we really expecting anything different <laughs> for a hybrid map let's be real here especially in the console scene man at least pc yeah, there's a chance we don't go to king's row console it's like there's no other map other than king's row <laughs> but it's, it's i mean come on what what did we what did we see out of um jewel we saw them play a lot of ramatra and that lends itself very perfectly to King's Row and its dichotomy and its geometry. And it's a it's a great Ramatra map. It really is. King's Row is just a really great map, so wouldn't be surprised. Oh my gosh, I hope I hope we see the Reinhardt. Listen, I know Ramatra is really good, but give me Reinhardt, please. I I beg. I want it so bad. Maybe. Maybe if I'm lucky. We also got a real quick update as well. We have some substitutions coming in on the side of we love Jewel. Sagi is going to be taking over for Parzival, so a DPS change and maybe one that might give We Love Jewel the edge here, especially going on to King's Row, so maybe strategic swaps. What I find funny is you're the one begging for Reinhardt. I was literally a Reinhardt one trick in Overwatch 1 for so long. Me too! So... Uh, Me too. I, I would love some Reinhardt, man. <laughs> it wasn't until I started competing in CGL when I got a little bit more flexible on my tank heroes. Um, but I mean, I, I really expect to see the Ramatra out of Jewel. But I do think for Chicago, we can expect to see more of this Arissa. I mean, they played it so well to counteract the Ramatra gameplay that Jewel was playing. And this is another great map for Arissa to reign supreme. You can easily speed pat speed through the choke on the lucio and just rain terror up front on that ramatra yeah that's kind of what we're hoping for is the fast action happening here with that lucio speed boost to get you through that initial choke point reposition yourself over onto the statue and that's kind of where orisa shines is being able to have that kind of poke damage so either the team is forced to engage on you if they're playing the ramatra or they have to go back and be in a much i guess better position couldn't agree with you more. Um, the, we're just kind of rating on the readies from both the teams before we get you guys in there. Chicago v. The World, just the main difference for them is, uh, okay, we saw the Arista coming out to counter the Ramatra, but the two maps they won, it really just came down to, they were a little bit more aggressive. And then they also just were very smart about knowing when, you know, we don't have the advantage here. Let's just back up, forfeit some percentage, get our full team, and then we re-aggress and reassess the situation. And they played it beautifully. And once they were in those prime positions, they never over-invested. And the one time they did, they lost. So they were able to make yep. that swap, then make that change on the final map and won it in, a mo in the most dominating fashion of all the three maps. Quick update as well, we are having some more substitutions once again, this time on the side of Chicago v. The World. Cry Melt, she is going to be replaced by a sin. So the supports for Chicago changing up, the DPS for Wheel of Jewel changing up. Substitutions already being made in the second map, Ray. This is getting, this is heating up. 
Yeah, uh, when I was talking to CB earlier after first map, we're kind of at a jalapeno, and I say that's kind of where we're at right now. We 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 Ooh. haven't we haven't lifted up to that that habanero yet, and maybe maybe if we get to a five mapper, maybe we reach that scorpion pepper level. Good to see you. Listen, I'm feeling spicy right now because Thanatos, Thanatos, don't do this to me, okay? Don't give me hope. You stick with that Reinhardt. You don't hover over. You got to stick with it, okay? You got to give it to me. Yeah, you don't Please. bait the Reinhardt. You don't do that to us. You don't break our hearts with a Reinhardt bait. Like, how could you do I that? I couldn't live. I couldn't live. <laughs> I, I, I wouldn't be able to go out through the rest of the series. Yeah, I, right, I'm literally just going to X out of my camera and just leave. I'm done. Like. <laughs> <laughs> now, we love Jewel electing to go with the May. I mean, for defense, it's the right Let's call. Let's go with I the think. Reinhardt! Yes! All right, we're going to be swinging. We're going to be going for the home run here. Actually, it's an axe, so not a hammer. I guess they're going to be going for... Uh, they're going to be chopping. They're going to be putting up on the chopping block. There we go. Uh, the wall does come up. It's not going to separate Thanatos yeah, from the rest of the group, so really one. just wait for it to go down. Yeah, it's not a great one. In fact, you're also going to bring out the protection, Suzu. Look at this, though. Sends them right back. Chicago's in control. It's the Reinhardt. I, I don't Obviously. know that that was not the Reinhardt tab. I don't know if you <laughs> saw that, but the newly substituted in Ascend on the Ana came in with a picture perfect anti nate, forced out the cryo freeze out of Soggy, and they were able to engage and completely disrupt what we love Jewel oh, was yes. trying to do. That was incredible work by Ascend. Now, mental is going to meet Thanatos in the Reinhardt v. <laughs> Reinhardt. Oh, but Thanatos gets separated from the team. Still going to survive, actually. And the only person who's going to take them down is Soggy, but you've lost Kofi. You've lost Mental. They got to get out of there. We love Jules doesn't want to stagger here. Chicago's going to be able to take all of that space for basically free now. The Antinade once again coming in from Ascend. Force out the Cryo Freeze from Soggy once again. I, I cannot believe it. You know, you think, you know, sometimes you're sitting on the bench and get a little chilly, a little cold. Not for a cent. He had those hand warmers. He was ready to go and is just making incredible plays straight from the gun on this map. Oh my gosh. It's, oh my gosh. Thanatos. The Earth Shatter is going to bring them to their knees in the back line. I mean, Zoggy's going to get a double kill. Really, at that point, what are you going to do? You're going to try and stall out for as long as you can. It's going to be a rough stagger now. Yeah, I mean, the one good thing was you were only at the library bookstore corner and you forced out both the Shatter and the Nano. So you got two ultimates and they're, you're still going to have to at least take one more fight if you're Chicago be the world. And We Love Jewel can now come in and they have this Kitsune rush online. And we talk about how important the speed boost is to this Reinhardt composition. They don't even have to engage with it because they can use an ultimate to be able to do that. Yeah, they can just hang back. You're gonna have to watch out here, though. Here's Rinzer and the Kitsune Rush. Let's see if these boxes are good. Tracemaker is already gonna take out Witty Weave. This is gonna force Chicago all the way back because they want to respect what that Kitsune Rush brings to the table. And this is beautiful for We Love Jewel. They're finally able to be the defense that they needed to be and push back Chicago. Yeah, and only two ultimates to commit to be able to finally stop the bleeding. Finally kick their heels into the ground and stand strong. So they're going to have to be very careful of this incoming death blossom. We've seen JT Cool set up so many plays with this, but what I'd be trying to do if I was Chicago be the world, Ascend has been pinpoint accurate with these nades. Use one and maybe force out the sound barrier early so you can get JT Cool for a free death blossom. JT Cool feeling a little low on the HPs, making sure to play careful here. Now is the mental games between the Reinhards that Mental is going to win out on that. It just got right inside of that and separated with the wallet. Tracemaker lands the good railgun. Now, JT, oh my goodness. No way, JT, cool that you're going to be able to do another death blossom like that. The patience that comes from this Reaper. Unbelievable, Ray. They even had the sound barrier and just had him so picture perfectly positioned to where they couldn't even get it in time. If they even attempted to, it would have been an Ajax. So JT Cool is just, I mean, basically he needs to create a YouTube video on how to play Reaper because he is just putting on a clinic right now. He really is. I would subscribe. I would like favorite comment as well. All of the above for this Reaper. Now it's going to be another Earth Shatter Mental Tracemaker and an anti nade to come in, but the Blizzard is going to stall things out. It's back and forth, though, with the picks. Thanatos is feeling a little chilly in these winter months, but 
The ship has been righted, and the teams are still duking it out amongst each other. No picks for now. Really the only ultimate to work with here is that overclock and the Kitsune rush. Thanatos lands the pin onto Tracemaker. The opening is here. Yeah, can you make something happen when we with this overclock? Because Renzer can come in at any second with this Kitsune rush and make it so much more difficult for you to be nailing your shot. So who's going to be the one with the quick draw? It is the Kitsune rush. All right, Kitsune Rush, this is gonna have to be big. The two Reinhards are meeting in the mega room. They're gonna stun each other, but the only one who's gonna go down is Mitchell. That Reaper brings so much extra to the table that May just wasn't able to. I, I mean, JT Cool, just in general, is bringing so much to the table. And look at that, they're gonna go teleport right into the back line and start doing it again. Yeah, that's the big issue. You talk about what the Reaper they got brings. It. Three minutes on the clock, incredible time bank. But you talked about what the Reaper brings to the table versus the May. What the May brings is that geometry with the wall to be able to separate people. And I just felt like there were some times where they got a good wall, right? But it felt like it wasn't consistent enough to be taking full advantage of what May brings to the table. I think too, Ray, is something, I think there might just be some communication issues going on right now with We Love Jewel, because Mental was so wanting to go on top of Thanatos. Get rid of them, get them out of the table. We saw that Thanatos was isolated from the rest of the team, but Thanatos was inside of the Mega Room, was able to pick up the Mega Pack, undid a lot of damage, and then JT Cool comes right in, sweeps up, and starts blasting, just doing Reaper things. And, 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 and I think there might just be that little bit of a disconnect happening. It very well could be. It, again, we even saw from the get-go, right, on that first attack, that first wall that came out from Soggy, it just wasn't great. Like, it, it was kind of just in front of the Reinhardt, didn't wall him off. The Reinhardt was like, all right, cool, I'll just chill here for a couple seconds. Then we go in and we make stuff happen. They're also, it seems like they're having trouble dealing with Ascend on this Ana. Who would have thought Ana in this meta when Kiriko exists and Wheel of Jewels has been playing Kiriko for them to be getting so much value out of these nades when a protection Suzu exists? It, it feels like they're able to get themselves, but they're not doing a great job of being able to cleanse the rest of their team. No, indeed not. All right. Now it's Chicago with the defense. They have three minutes in that time bank. That's a lot of time to work with here. We Love Jewel has to make sure they meet that standard and they cannot let that continue on. Chicago versus the world hiding out in this corner is gonna duel it here. Then it's very low, dangerously low. As a matter of fact, is holding on by a thread. The healing is gonna be able to come back up to give them the life support that they need. It's getting very close for We Love Jewel to get this point, but it's gotta be stopped. JT Cool is gonna be the one to initiate and aggress onto the site to make sure they're not taking it. Mental goes down though. That's that's gonna be putting We Love Jewel and look at that, that anti-nade. Unreal, that anti-nade. Wow, and Witty Weave coming through with three ginormous picks to keep the dream and hopes alive for Chicago V the world on this defense, but the spawn advantage is in so much more favor for uh, We Love Jewel. So Chicago V the world is gonna have to play very safe. Okay, they do get everyone back in time. That was very smart of Kermit. Okay, so Kitsune Rush now again from Rinzer. Thanatos is not gonna find anything inside of that Earth Shatter. Hit with a Nano Boost too, and the beat to give them just that little bit of extra support and breathing room. We love Jewel, forced to use the Protection Suzu once more. Now they have an Earth Shatter of their own, but Thanatos has gone Weedy Weave instead of this Overclock. Unreal, look at what they're doing. They're dismantling it piece by piece. You lose your Reinhardt, and in comes like almost like Spider Man swinging on a web. Witty Wib slides in, pops the overclock, kills three. Witty Weeb is putting the team on their back. I said previously, JT Cool was the player of the map for Chicago on Oasis. This map, it's been Witty Weeb. Yeah, Witty Weave is, we, we know what Witty Weave is capable of. We know that they are insane. Now, We Love Jewel has an entire litany of ultimates they can use. The first one, that is going to be expended. The sound barrier, JT, cool the, how? Ray, how? 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 How do you consistently keep getting two to three kills every time with your death blossom? This, the brains, the positioning, the situational awareness from this man is blowing my mind, Sam. It, it's... Ah! This is almost... It, it, it's almost just 
What is JP Cool doing? Wheel of Jewel still has three ultimates to use. The overclock from Tracemaker. It's gonna have to be now or never, and they're gonna be able to take the point here with the ultimates that they're expending. But man, Chicago wasted so much time. They really did. Yeah, I mean, that was almost 75% of their allotted time bank. So you gotta be feeling very good considering you have a three minute time bank of the anti nade. Not gonna be able to do much. <laughs> as Ascend gets rail shot and sent back to spawn. So a lot of space is gonna be bought for We Love Jewel. The, the question is, where can they get the cart before they take the first fight? The good thing is you don't have to deal with a fight at the archway, but can they get this cart past the bookstore corner? That's like the second big choke you want to try and not take a second fight at. Um, but we're, we're going to have to see. It seems like there's enough players back for them to be able to take this fight at the bookstore. It's going to be very pivotal. We love Jewel needs to use something here. All right, Soggy, that's what we've been wanting to see. You doing the same exact thing that JT Cool has been. Thanatos expanded the Earth Shatter, though. This might be big. This might be We Love Jewel's chance. Yeah, and the Nano was expended, too. The Shatter and the Nano. I feel like Soggy finally found the playbook that JT Cool's been using and made it happen. Got in the back line himself, picture-perfect positioning, lets off the Death Blossom. The The problem is We Love Jewel has literally nothing to work with right now, Sam. And Witty Weed, who we've been deeming kind of the savior for Chicago View the World, has this overclock, and it's popped, and it gets oh, no one. Witty Weave is gonna explode right onto We Love Jewel with an overclock and it's just running and gunning them down a second one on top of that. We Love Jewel. Now they're gonna have to walk all the way back, burning more and more of those precious seconds, Ray. And to me, even though they kind of had that fight where they lost, where they used two ultimates in Anno and the Shatter, because they were able to win that fight alone with the overclock they now have a great ult economy bank because they're able to have this death muscle from jt cool and a sound barrier to sustain them through anything jewel throws at them all right jt cool another death blossom we've seen what happens when this insane reaper decides to use it they don't look at that anti oh, 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 oh my god ray another 3k oh that is incredible I don't think I... We got to talk about it. The setup from Chicago for JT Cool to keep doing this over and over and over and over and over again is beautiful. I see where he gets his name from, JT Cool. He's just so cool with the flag shatter. Oh my gosh, yeah, Thanatos. It's just clinical now. It really is. They're just destroying. They're going right to the back line and doing stuff like that. No way. Oh man, this is just, th this match is just blowing my mind with the crazy plays we're seeing coming out of both sides. As we love Jewel, this it should finally be their opportunity. They're gonna have four ultimates at the beginning of this fight and Soggy could build this Death Blossom as well. All Chicago V the world has now is this Nano. I mean, maybe you give it to your Reinhardt to try and help them build up to a Shatter for future fights faster. And they're gonna do exactly that. It's expanding everything for We Love Jewel. Thanatos is gonna, like you said, get that, stay alive. And it is everything from We Love Jewel in order to take this point. But they are still, they still got some ways to go. I think Chicago, does Chicago have enough time to get back? Ah, uh, with that Ascend pick? I, I don't think so. I think that yeah. was pretty much the nail in the coffin for the second point. But it's gonna be in overtime. So no matter what, Sam, this is the big deal for Chicago because even if We Love Jewel finishes this map, it's gonna be in overtime. So this is best case scenario at this point for We Love Jewel is a draw. That's really all you can hope for at this point. Yeah, you wanna get that draw. You wanna get it as close to your heart as you possibly can. But then you gotta look at it, the rave if they make that happen, they gotta burn three minutes. Three minutes and the first defending round that they had, they, they lost it almost immediately. Oh, right in the back line. Thanatos just got free real estate to use that Earth Shatter. One ultimate was all it took. Ray, one. That's the power of Chicago v. the world. It's in their name, man. They're versus the entire world. They have the skills, they have the ult economy, and they are just showing why. They are one of the teams in this championship round. They are just absolutely dominating. But that was not very smart by Thanatos. 
Got a little Maybe too got cocky. a little overzealous. Yeah, a little overzealous. C overconfidence is a slow and insidious killer. But not that time around. It, it happened very fast. JG Cool using every single piece of utility in order to get out there, Wraith, and then teleport. Somehow actually makes it away too. But Chicago has a pretty decent chunk of ultimates on their side. That they do, that they do, and there's no sound barrier to try and deal with it. Maybe if they can build up to this Kitsune Rush, they have the ability to use that speed boost to help kite away from anything coming in. But Witty Weed pops the overclock. It's overclock, and it is oh. over now. Again, Ray, JT Cool. Two kills inside of that Death Blossom. These DPS are insane. Witty Weep doesn't need no stinking overclock, and they don't need no stinking losses either. Chicago versus the world. Ah, another map, King's Row. I don't think you realize what Witty Weep just did, Sam. Overclock only got one kill, and it kind of got overshadowed by the double Death Blossom from JT Cool. But that one overclock kill was on a Death Blossoming sock. It brings a tear to your eye, doesn't it, Ray? It just does. I, if you're that Reaper, right? I wouldn't have a keyboard. It'd be smashed in half. I would be <laughs> cursing under my breath, witty weeb. How dare you do this to me? We in the jewel. chat, just like, how dare you? How dare, how freaking dare you? But we love Jewel on the back foot now, big time here. Chicago versus the world at two. We're gonna take a small break, reorient ourselves. And I, I mean, I, I need to catch my breath. Yeah, I, I need like a drink of water. Like my, my voice is dry just from that craziness. <laughs> we'll be right back. The stage one playoffs are heating up big time, but mostly in the favor of Chicago versus the world. Ray, I don't think we expected this coming into it, but I mean, the final battleground where everything is gonna be happening, where it's all, or nothing for We Love Jewel, Junkertown. Yeah, uh, I mentioned in the break when we found out that it was gonna be Junkertown. I'm like, ooh, I have not casted this map in a while and I'm very excited. I love the aesthetic. I, I love the lore behind Junkertown, especially now that we have Junker Queen in the game. Oh, it's it's beautiful sight to see. But outside of the beauty of this map, this is where it all comes it could all come to an end. Jewel has to come back swinging with some sort of game plan. I hope that during this break, they were able to get together, write up a new game plan, because if they lose here, it's all over. And Chicago via the world are gonna be your stage one champions for the NA console GM division. Absolutely, and we've had some more substitutions coming in, Ray. I don't think we were really expecting anything different this time around. It's going to be Parzival for Tracemaker, and then we're going to have JT for Miss Viper. A little bit, uh, I hope we were able to follow that, but we have had the substitutions once more. This is, it's just, the teams are so, you can see the passion and the dedication that they are doing whatever it takes to win. And there it is, mental on the ball. We talked about it. We, we thought we might see it on Oasis, and we did a little bit. No, we no, we didn't. We saw the D.Va because they thought the ball was going to come out. But this time, fully expecting the ball on a map like Junkertown, where it's a great domain for, you know, the for Wrecking Ball to just <laughs> live in your back line, be able to roll around and get constant health packs. It, it, it's tough. So they're trying to play this D.Va to counteract the ball. And I've seen varying levels of success using diva to counter our ball it, it, i like the idea of using the zenyatta to have the discord orb to unleash lots of damage between the discord orb and your micro missiles and that's also too why you have the brigade give it just that little bit of extra momentum the way that things are toned around oh rest in peace miss viper at the very least for chicago they got rid of mental so now you have to worry uh one less about a ball wreaking havoc on you Ball does get back extremely fast, however, so you're always going to have to worry about that as the Brig is trying to dance around the objective and avoid the parsable shots. Uh, this is all going to be about mental, trying to set up slams to give easy headshots for the parsable to work with. Oh, oh my gosh, the Widowmaker duels. We've gotten Reinhardt duels, we get Widowmaker now. We are starting this year off right. And Witty Weeb is starting off these fights, right? 
taking out Soggy. Looking around, Parzival just hasn't had the opportunity that they saw at the very beginning. And Witty Weave is just racking the one HP. No way. We say all the time, he's one, he's one. He was literally he's one. Literally one. <laughs> oh my gosh. And now with Chicago is gonna get this point A. With Thanatos, Baby Diva. Hmm, that's one way to go about doing it. I really like this composition that Chicago be the world's playing. Like I mentioned, the Discord orb is the valuable piece of the puzzle to be able to combine with the with the with the micro missiles. But having that break to help protect the Zen, especially being able to throw Discord orbs on the tracer, for example, uh, to try and deter her away as well. But we're seeing now that they are finally getting their footing. Oh, is mental one two? How is Wheel of Jewel getting away out of these fights with literally, quite literally, one HP? Going right in. Soggy has their target and they execute perfectly. Hit the recall too, so they get to survive another day. Now they have the pulse bomb in hand. An opportunity to be able to use it. You gotta make sure it doesn't get eaten. They throw and they what? stick what? it. They Wait, hit what? We. I didn't, what? Yeah, let that sink what? in, folks. Let that sink in. That was crazy. The one thing I didn't like though was that was that positioning. As the Diva Bomb forces out the transcendence mm -hmm. from Renzer, that's actually massive. That is massive. Okay, uh, that's one way to go about doing it. And now we're gonna have Renzer having to make sure they watch their heads. Don't want to get it lopped off by Miss Viper. The Infrasight is gonna give them that little bit of extra information as to where everyone is. And so Chicago is gonna play just that little bit more cautiously, just that little bit safer, waiting for it to run out, giving themselves a chance to breathe. Yeah, and Mental has the ability to block any kind of rotation or dive that Chicago tries to make because they have these mines online. And with them being able to reactivate so much faster, it makes them so much more deadly. Oh, Mental, you're playing a very dangerous game, my friend, but a game that needs to be played by someone who is a good ball. Witty Weeb and an overclock and a dream and a hope and no eliminations just yet instead gonna be bullied by mental they're still no way. alive no way Thanatos, Thanatos came in so clutch did you see that defense matrix right yes. he saved witty weave's life and now they're able to turn it right back around and kill out mental <laughs> oh my goodness this is insane team synergy coming out of chicago this is what we need to highlight they seem to be you talk about like the Dallas Fuel Hive mentality. Even in these dive-based compositions, they're all on the same page. They, they're communicating so well. Witty Weave knows like, hey, I need this DM, I need this DM. If you help me out here, we are going to win this. In comes Thanatos, comes in with the DM and just, that was good night, Eileen. Yeah, good night indeed. Now the payload gets to continue its forward march. Let's take a look at ultimates real quick. They do have the rally, but Thanatos has a self-destruct. So that could be a good way to be able to gain a little bit more space. He might not even need it. Mental took so much damage in trying to engage on top of Thanatos that they're forced to immediately roll away. The high ground control is still being taken by Chicago. And so they get to just have all of the, they get to have all the space. They get to have all of the planes that they want to be executed. Yeah, it's oh, so low. Gonna force out the Diva Bomb. Okay, okay. They're just. The good thing is they didn't. Because last time the Diva Bomb was used, it forced out Renzer's Transcendent. So you don't have to put Soggy going down. Oh no. They weren't even, they weren't even aiming for Soggy. They, they were just crossfire, man. Yeah, they, oh, now you just go right on top of Renzer. You just continue to hit those afterburners time after time. And it's gonna be kill after kill. Now you're going in for another one. Kobe stuck in a corner. Bullied around. Reminds me of high school. <laughs> It feels like we love Jewel just on a hope and a dream. With Kopi coming back so late, this is all going to be one final fight, but they should be able to engage with Rally. But Kermi comes first with the aggression on the Rally. Renzer at the very least still has the Transcendence in the pocket. Is actually going to use it to heal Mental back up to full. This tank needs to survive. They need to build up towards those mines because that minefield could be the difference here. Oh my gosh, but Miss Viper is going to land some clean headshots onto Renzer and now Mental has fallen. No mines from them. Chicago versus the world all of the way once more. Two minutes and 19 seconds as well, Ray. So I mentioned that I used to be a Reinhardt one trick, but before Overwatch 2 came out and I was in my final season of playing 
in a competitive scene before I, I really just focused on casting. I was on an off tank saga and I was mostly playing just D.Va, Zarya, and Sig. So I love seeing an Overwatch 2 with, with D.Va. I feel like she's low key kind of been like the quiet consistency. Like she's never been like, we have to run D.Va. But she's also never been like, oh my gosh, D.Va is just absolutely bad in this meta. It, it, it's, and I just love it when teams can make her work. Oh, and Chicago making her work big time. Wheel of Jewel, hey, this is Chikma coming out. So they're looking to have the poke. They want to be able to use that. And I think maybe Wheel of Jewel should have made that adjustment much, much earlier. The ball, the ideas were there and they were able to get some they were able to squeeze some value out of it, but I don't think they were able to squeeze as much as they thought they were going to be able to. I think, I feel like Sigma might be able to bring more to the table. Yeah, this is the classic, you know, what you think of when you think of payload maps, especially, you know, your watch points of the world, your uh, circuit royales of the world, your Havanas, where you play a Sigma, you have that deployable shield and you play double hit scan. That's what we're seeing out of We Love Jewel right now. I mean, the question is, can you stop Thanatos on this diva from diving onto your hit scan. So good thing is they're now going to have a mercy pocket, so it's not going to be so easy to dive and take them out. And you're going to have an accretion to throw and defend as well. Still so right now, Widowmakers exchanging bullets here and there, but for the moment, both of the teams are kind of giving each other the stare down, not wanting to make the first move. Chicago is going to make sure that they hold onto that high ground. Meanwhile, we love Julie. You can see that mental has set themselves up over across directly from them. This is how you want to blow the doors wide open, though. Miss Viper headshot onto Soggy. Traded out by Parsival. Beautifully well done. And you get Thanatos. Beautiful. Just patiently waiting almost like you're in a crow's nest and you're, you're just waiting to line up that perfect shot and it finally happened for parsable and now they're cooking with crisco right now they got this cart moving they just got to win one more team fight to bring this across the board and it oh, is possible. happening very quickly yes it is one after another falls and it seems like the sigma pick indeed was the correct one Mental's just racking them up, and look at that, 70% to that Gravitic Flux. I feel like if you're Chicago, you gotta make a swap now. I really don't like the D.Va into the Sigma, as we now see them making that swap. Thanatos now going over to the Sigma. So it, it, it's it's a Sigma v Sigma. Basically, the, the tank and the DPS are the same. The difference is the supports. So you're gonna have the ability to have that Discord orb to help out your hit scans a little bit more. Uh, with extra damage, but then on the conversely, Wheel of Jewel has a lot more heals available to them between the Mercy and the Baptiste. All right, what do we have here? Thanatos taking a lot of damage is what we have, so they're gonna have to wait for the healing to come forth. We're still holding on to that high ground. This is an excellent point for them to be able to get, well, you know, headshots like that from Miss Viper. Damage is undone by Mercy, but at the very least you drew out the revive. Now it's time to rotate once more. Miss Viper looking for an opportunity. Immortality field down, not able to execute Renzer. Still alive, the Valkyrie is gonna keep them going just that little bit more and the Infrasight has been expended. Trying to see who they can find. Meanwhile, the rest of Chicago, they're Ooh. finding a lot. Oh my gosh. Wow. Misty Viper. Mist Viper said, I've had enough of your shenanigans. I'm going to click your head and send you back to the spawn doors. Uh, again, kind of expensive. You you use both your DPS ultimate. Uh, generally speaking, I always consider Widow's ultimate is just like a like a like wasting time kind of ultimate because the team is just forced to kind of play back and play out of line of sights. Um, so it's not the end of the world that you use that. Um, but we let Jewel comes back in with three, and what a beautiful headshot! Right on top of that, hits the grappling hook right up at the air, and Miss Viper. Well, they didn't even see it coming. Now you're waiting for another opportunity to regroup with the rest of the team, pick up the small pack, and Sagi is going to be putting in the efforts of their own as well. They see, I think they saw the Zenyatta. They know that they're chilling there. One shot goes out, hits a Sind, but a Sind doesn't fall. They do have to play it a little bit carefully, waiting for the healing to come forth once more. Meanwhile, Miss Viper and the Gravitic Flux throws them up in the air. What are we looking for here? Thanatos doesn't get any kills. The Immortality Field is going to keep them safe. Now we have the Amplification Matrix and Soggy inside of this overclock. It's going to be actually Kermit to meet this overclocking Soggy. 
with their baguette and it's actually working out so well you kind of distracted them for a moment and that's the patience from chicago v world that we've seen back on oasis and we saw that once again they lost both their dps their supports in their tank hang back they wait, they wait, they wait. They pop the rally, get the rally over health going on their Zen, on their Sigma. Then in comes Mist Viper, gets the headshot. Witty Weave comes back and they're able to roll. And what a stagger for Mist Viper. So now we're sitting at a two minute and 10 second clock with a payload just three fourths of the way to point B. And Chicago still in control of things. Mental does have a Gravitic Flux. That's one way to open it up here. But Chicago can completely counter that using the Transcendence. So you're going to see them perhaps clumped up just a little bit more. Mental wants to go up with that high ground. They want to force them away and have an opportunity to be able to catch somebody out using that Gravitic Flux. There we have it. But Chicago completely avoids it. Asin playing it safe, though, is going to use the Transcendence just in case. And now it's going to push inside of the room using that Transcendence. This is the kind of aggression that we love from Chicago. But somehow, Parsifal is winning out in this Widowmaker duel against Miss Viper. We love Jewel still making the attempt to happen, still trying to go for it. Witty Weave is just giving up that high ground. They want to get rid of, uh, they want to get rid of Parsifal. Now we're going to see another Gravitic Flux go up. Sissy and Metallic Field going to keep them safe. Yeah, and because they played into the hand of We Love Jewel and took that battle inside the stairs, it gave V Parzival all the angles, all the sight lines they needed to be able to click the heads while they were completely distracted by that front line battle. It's almost kind of like a ploy, like it's it's almost kind of like misdirection, like a magician, like ha ha ha! Look at us over here while our widow snipes your head off from over there. I wonder. There's still 3.36 meters. Kermi actually used the rally, but Renzer took them out before any value was given. Now Chicago has lost point B. We love Jewel continuing their approach. We're still under the timer from what Chicago made, though. But this is Escort. So as long as they complete the map, it does not matter. They will get another attempt at this as we see the Wrecking Ball coming out from Thanatos. I'm curious to see how this interaction between the sick and the ball works because if I was tired and just sick of a ball if I was playing tank one of the t tanks I'd be thinking of playing is Sigma because I have an accretion I can just throw in his face uh, so that is just gonna have to be extremely careful okay Miss Viper you showing us off what you can do now Parsifal falls very quickly to that headshot things are going back and forth now Soggy goes down as well both of the DPS were gone before Kopi and just get the revive off the of Parsifal but still I mean Chicago really only has this overclock they can work with. Mental is going to use the Gravitic Flux, but I don't think anyone was caught inside of this. Thanatos, meanwhile, playing in the back line. He's rid of Renzer. This is going to push Chicago back. Oh, Miss Viper, hello. Uh, oh, sorry. <laughs> My screen was completely glitched there for a second. Um, yeah, very incredible work from Chicago. Th this has been a big reason why they are up in this series and have been kind of dominating. They just have so much versatility and so much brains and situational awareness to just know this ain't working. Let's swap to this. Now this, now they countered us. Let's swap to this. And they're just playing well as the mines get thrown in. Oh, you just throw in the mines and you prevent Parzival from being able to get... <gasps> the second Kermit took the shield down, Parzival lopped their head off. That was just perfect timing. RNG basically right there, but it worked out so well in their favor. Now Thanatos, they gotta get out, but they can't. And only 20 seconds left on the clock. The car is rounding the final corner. It all comes down to this final fight. No res available. Can We Love Jewel make something happen? Soggy has the overclock and they have the sustain with the Valkyrie, but Chicago has the transcendence and an overclock of their own. Here we go. This is where it all comes down. We, we, we know what you're capable of inside of this overclock, but can you make it happen? It's being a little bit more difficult right now, but at the very least, Soggy's not doing too much with theirs either, but the damage was just oh. immense, and Ascend wanting to hold on to that Transcendence we, falls with it. Still has it in their pocket, though, and it's been traded out thanks to the efforts of Witty Weave landing a sick headshot onto Renzer. Undone, though, by the Mercy Revive, and Kobe doing a fantastic job. At the very least, though, Mental has been taken out of that D.Va now it's all going to come down to this. Thanatos rolling right into this, eliminating Mental right into the back line over to Parsifal. And with that, Chicago versus the world winning the Stage 1 Playoff Grand Finals here on Junkertown.
that could have been so disastrous for Chicago v. The World, Sam, with Ascend going down early and not using the Transcendence, but Chicago played that so well between the pressure being put on the backline from Mental and Witty Weeb on that Sojourn playing incredibly well they were able to keep themselves alive just long enough they got the picks ascend came back kept them alive with the transcendence and that was door slammed in the face book closed game over boom there it is all right well a clean sweep here from chicago versus the world and i think well that is going to be that take a look here this is what the map pool looked like this is what the scores look like one to two, two to three, two to three, Chicago versus the world, winning out in every single one of them. And what a showing here, though. I, I mean, from both of these teams. It was a sight to see, Sam, but just utter domination coming out from Chicago v. The World. They showed how impressive they are, how flexible all their players are, and just how cohesive they are as a team, and how smart and situationally aware they are. And those are just perfect ingredients. Throw it in a pot, and that's the success. That's like a great recipe for a successful team, a stage one playoff winning team. Indeed so. However, that is going to be it for us here tonight at the very least. But we still have more games upcoming, so make sure to hit that follow button here on CGL. Once again, a big congratulations to Chicago versus the world on their win here in the Stage 1 Playoff Grand Finals. My name is Sam Tonks. Joining me to Try Hard Ray, we'll see all of you on the next broadcast. Later.